I've done this a lot, actually, right? Um, it's one thing when you're up here presenting about a company or a product, you can, I don't know, just, it feels a lot easier. You have to overcome the fear of being in front of everybody. It's something else to come up here and talk about yourself, um, to share your own story. And uh, that's what I'm gonna try to do today. Um, hopefully I, I get through it all. <clears throat> Uh, John, just as a reminder, uh, I, 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 wasn't, I didn't think I was going to go into the ALP. And uh, John with his, you know, he's a pretty big guy, pretty strong guy. Uh, and uh, even over the phone, he was able to uh, twist my arm. And, and uh, I, I, I think he committed me into the ALP. And I just followed. <clears throat> um, Bert, when you're in the poem... Uh, I thought a lot about boldness and, and, and I had the privilege of seeing the poem beforehand and thank you Rand and, and that I thought about boldness and, and I was thinking about my story and you know we, we think boldness it, it sounds great it's uh, it's it's, uh, it's what we all want to have we want to be bold and I don't think I really ever understood the relationship between boldness and courage. Um, and if there's one thing <clears throat> in my story that I just want you to hang on to is, is this, this journey of understanding the relationship between being bold and being courageous. I, I feel like, you know, you, you need to get to know me for the story. Uh, and <clears throat> this is my family. Um, you don't r realize just how blessed you are until much later. Um, my dad, career army, uh, we moved around a lot. He, he was enlisted. And uh, we didn't have a lot of material stuff. Um, but we, had, we were close. You know, we had dinner together every day. Um, we vacationed, camped. And as a kid, I thought this was, this was absolutely wonderful. So it was, a, it was in, in re looking back, it was a very simple life, filled with a lot of happiness, a lot of love. And, you know, just kind of as life does, life throws to you curves and, and, uh, and challenges. Um, when I was 10, my mother passed away. And you think, oh man, you know, uh, that's pretty, pretty tough. But you don't really think about it as a 10-year-old. You have a brother. So I, I took over the family. I was like, I was um, kind of, you know, the parent, the second parent. And um, you learn. You start to develop a lot of patterns. You, you figure out how to solve problems. You figure out um, how to get to the next day, go to school, pack lunches, do homework, things like that. And you're not really thinking long term, but you're, 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 you're surviving, you're, you're, you're moving along, you're, you're starting to be bold, you're, you're, you know, you figure out how to get to the next turn and, and get past that turn. Um, and then a few years later, my father remarried, he married, and, uh, and then you have a whole new chapter with a stepmom. And, uh, and that was a very difficult time, especially after you've started to, you've, you've started to take control of, of that journey. You felt that you had the taste of control, you had the taste of what you're capable of doing, and then to have it all taken back. And, and you know, a new mom coming in saying, well, forget about all of that, this is, this is a new, new life, and this is how we're gonna raise you. And, Probably that was a point where I made some resolutions to myself as a kid that I, I will be different. I'm, gonna, I'm, going, to, I'm going to accomplish things. Um, maybe this family, and I started distancing myself from this very simple, 
value-rich family that I had um, to be more, hey, what's, what's important for me, you know? Because I, I don't really associate now with this new family that's happening and I need to go out and, and, and do my own thing. Um, that's, what, that's how you think as a kid, right? Uh, and actually, that's how I thought for decades. It's only recently that I've been able to reach back to, to my, my stepmom, my mom, and, and start to rebuild and say, you know, I'm really appreciative of what you did. And, and, to, and to, to think that had she not been there, my dad would have been alone, I probably wouldn't have been able to do what I did because I would have had to have been there. I would have wanted to be there. <clears throat> but we all have triggers in our life. And the trigger for me to really take that, that step and, and, and think about what it is that I want it to be to f discover some ambition happen around this time. When, as I got into work, and as John said, you know, I was very lucky. I, I, I um, had a role with Mercedes, which is Daimler and Daimler Airbus. It's, all, it's really the same company. I, I, I've, I've never worked for another company than the one I, I retired from last year. But some, I think five years in, as you're kind of getting to the level where um, the company starts to invest in you, I, I took several leadership courses and there was this book that really resonated with me. Um, it was Who Moved My Cheese? Um, and it, it's, a, it's a small book, so it was easy for me to read. I got through it quickly. Um, and, you know, it was about change, but change for me was, I was used to change. So it really wasn't, probably I didn't take out of the book what it, what the purpose of the book, you know, um, uh, what, what I took away from it was I recognized myself in that book. And, and I know you've all have read it, um, but just to you know, remind you of the characters, you had Hem and Haw, and you had uh, Sniffer and Scurry. And they were all in this maze together. There was cheese, and it was a story about how they worked or how, how they related to the cheese being moved, Right? And, uh, and, 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 and what they did after the cheese was moved. For me, scurry was me, it was me. That was, I was the scurry mouse. And I felt proud to be scurry mouse. You know, I, um, I never sat idle. I didn't over deliberate. I was very goal oriented. And I was proud that I got through the maze all the time. I got through many mazes. I found a lot of cheese. And you know, it, it was thanks to this, Bert, maybe the boldness, maybe that's, that's what it was. You know, that calling and I just, I w went into it. I don't think there's a lot of thinking about it, right? It's just, you, you react, you act, you just go in and you do it. And over decades, almost three decades of running through, I don't know how many different mazes, what you realize is you are learning along the way. For good, because whatever the maze is, you're learning how to get through the maze quicker, you're learning how to find more cheese, you're learning how to maybe bring more mice with you uh, or delegate what you're doing in the maze. But you, 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 you develop patterns and habits. And you know, okay, well, this is, this is what I do. This is effective. If I, if I do this, we're going to get to this part of the maze. If, we, if I don't do that, this will happen. If I have these type of mice around me, we can get there quicker. So, so you develop these patterns and these habits, and they've proven over and over and over again that they work because you get the cheese, right? Right? And it's, it's, it's reassuring to you. Some of those patterns, I just want to, because we think all of us are there. We think, yeah, I know that. That briefcase that I bring home that has all those tools that I've, I've honed and I've, I've worked on and, and they've made me who I am, they're great tools. They're great in getting me through that maze. 
One particular tool that I, I use quite a bit, I call it the, the bullhorn. And I, actually, I, I never called it the bullhorn until I think it was in the ALP we were talking about things about, you know, uh, patterns and, and it, I, I reflected on it. Maybe it was the ILP actually, I, I get them confused. But the bullhorn was, was something that I saw it worked. I mean, it's not a bullhorn, I just speak up. I, ha I can use my voice to get your attention. If a board meeting isn't going the way I think it should go, I can, I can, I, I can get it directed back to where it needs to go. That sounds great, right? It's a great trait to have. It's a great tool to have. You know, you, who doesn't want a board meeting to go the way it should go? Who doesn't want a customer meeting to go the way it goes? It worked in the maze. But let's think about beyond the maze. So I used all of these patterns and Three decades, I'm, I'm, I'm going through all of the mazes. I'm, I'm the scurry mouse. I'm really proud of being a scurry mouse. And there's a lot that happens. And with every new event stimulus that's out there, I'm, I'm reacting to it. Sorry. And you think, <clears throat> oh yeah, there it is. You, 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 you have that assurance that this is right, this is working. There, there aren't any challenges that I can't handle. I'm, as, I'm a great CEO and obviously I'm a great father and I'm a great husband. Everything just, this, these are the perceptions that you get when you're, when you're just so used to being in that maze. You know, it's interesting about being in the maze and I just thought when we were talking about the labyrinth and the maze, it's kind of like when you're in the maze, do you really know who's around you? You're, 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 you're looking for that next turn. It's kind of like being a Formula One race car driver. You're just, you're so looking at where the turn is going to be, right? Um, And, and this can happen over 30 years, and you, you continue to, to get that reward of, you know, you're getting through the maze, everything is working well. And you have a view like <clears throat> you're king of the hill. We've all played that game. I use this sometimes when I'm talking to my team, but I use it for a different reason. I used to tell the teams, don't ever get into that feeling where you feel like you're king of the hill. Because when you're king of the hill, everyone who's trying to climb the hill, they have a different perspective, right? They're seeing, they're, they're seeing the challenge differently than you are. I've, re, I've changed that story um, where when you're standing on top of the mountain, and all these patterns have reinforced what you've been able to do. You are, you're missing, you're missing some really important ingredients. You're missing the perspective of what's really important to you. For me, that hill became a, that mountain or the king of the hill became a real hill in uh, January of 21, um, we were kind of in, in the pandemic. And this is, um, this is a hill in Washington, D.C., where I live with my family, uh, Dumbarton Oaks. Um, we walk our dogs there. And this was a cold January day. Um, and uh, I was walking with my daughter, uh, with her dog, and decided, you know, I'm gonna, this hill is here, um, no challenge. It's too small for me. I think I'm gonna sprint up this hill. Let me see if I can make it all the way to the top of the hill in a full out sprint. I used to do it when I was in high school. So clearly I can do it now. Well, um, 
I did it, ran up the top of the hill, my daughter came up, and I remember thinking, I should not have done that. That was, that was a little too much for me. Um, and, you know, the cold air, and I, my lungs were really cold. And, uh, you know, you just think, okay, I mean, won't do that again. Slept that night, went to work uh, the next day, and I walked to work. So I walked from Georgetown to Virginia. Across, it sounds like a distance, but it's really not. It's like a 45-minute walk uh, across Key Bridge. And it was cold. And I remember walking across the bridge, and, and I just wanted to reach my, my hands into my lungs to warm up my lungs. And I'd have to breathe through my gloves when I was walking because it was just so cold. And I got, I got to the office, and I, was, I told my, my staff, I was like, you know, I, I think when I ran up the hill, I think I, I, I did something to my lungs. You know, maybe, you know, in, froze the capillaries or, you know, did something. I, I'm not a doctor. Um, I know we, we have a few in here. Um, but, you know, Googled cold lungs at the office. <laughs> And it, it said I overexerted myself. That's what it said. And uh, so, you know, didn't think anything of it. Walked back home, had the same, same feeling. And you, you don't really think beyond that. You, you know, okay, I, I need to go to the doctors eventually. It wasn't until you wake up at 3 in the morning you're in your room, it's, it's warm, everything is cozy, and you have that same burning sensation. Your lungs are just on fire. And you don't wanna wake up your wife, you wanna just figure out how you get through this. And, uh, and uh, she wakes up because you're like moaning and you know, it's not good. And so she's like, call your doctor, Chris. And, um, I ran through all the time, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, like, whoa. <laughs> so went to the doctors, and uh, I was having a heart attack. I, I, I went to an annual physical every year, and um, plaque scan every year, 0.0. .0 no family... Uh, history of, of heart disease. <clears throat> heart attack was not something that would happen to me. My mother passed away from cancer. Cancer was going to get me, not a heart attack. And not, you know, 100% blockage in my right coronary. This is, this is a picture. Um, it's not the same one. Um, they were going to air evac me out, but uh, for some reason the helicopter wasn't there. So I went into an uh, ambulance. Um, the loneliest time I, I've, I've, I've ever had. You, you, you're, you're transitioning from belief, disbelief to belief that this could actually happen to you. When you're having a heart attack, they don't put you out. I, I thought maybe they would like sedate me and I would be out and not feeling anything. Uh, they, they, they give you some painkillers and, and you're in this ambulance. And this ride was probably 20 minutes, but it felt like it was an eternity. When the awesomeness of what has happened, and you say awesomeness, it's awesome now, back then it wasn't, but when that happens, You're this. You're 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 nothing. All of your successes, everything you've done, it, it means nothing, because now everything is going to be gone. And I thought about my family. Up until now, in my 30 years of going to the maze, my family was just. They were just there, right? They were a support for me. My focus was getting through the maze 30 years. And I prayed hard. I didn't want to die. I didn't want to miss out 
on what, what's next with my family. I didn't want to miss out on life. For someone who's been trained to go through the maze, the boldness of going through the maze, for that person to be forced to stop, that is, that's, 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 that, that will destroy you. When you're just, when you're used to being at that pace, when you're used to being the scurry mouse, and now you can't. After the operation, and I'm really thankful, you know, they, they did a great job and, and recovery was, was wonderful, but it, it takes a long time to recover. And you're, you're, in a, you're in a ward with a lot of other people who are worse off than you are, and that just brings you down even further. But the hardest part was, was just slowing down and thinking that you're broken, you're broken forever. M- maybe this wasn't a good thing. We, we talk a lot in the ILP and the ALP about you know, dojos and you, we can learn things, but if you don't practice them, they don't, then it doesn't mean anything. For me, going through the cardiac rehab was the best thing, I, I, best decision. And I didn't want to go through that because, you know, you have to drive back to the hospital and it's, it's, a, it's, it's not easy to do it. And they, you have to go back three times a week. And it's not actually mandatory. I didn't realize that. But, you know, they, they, it's not mandatory. It, and and, and I, I did it. I was very fortunate that I had a system around me that, that worked. But... What happened was I, I, I went through this rehab again and I started to, to, to build new habits, new habits around being slow. I started to have this introspection about who I, who I, who I am and what's really important to me. Those four promises that I made in the ambulance, they came straight up to the top. What, what was so important and what, how should I be responding to the situation I'm in right now? There's a, there's a quote that I, I only got exposed to in the ALP after the heart attack, but when Vid, I think Vid read us the quote, it, it brought me down. I, 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 I it resonated so much that I felt like this, this, this sums everything for me. And it's from Viktor Frankl, and it goes, between stimulus and response, there is a space. Between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. And in that response is our freedom and our growth. When I was in the maze, I don't think I ever slowed down enough to be conscious about my response. It was my patterns. It was what, what designed me, and I got so used to it. But when you're able to slow down, and you choose how you want to respond to what's happening to you, you're going to make those choices based on what's really important to you not about the cheese and the maze. Because you know in the labyrinth, you're going to get out anyway if you just keep walking, right? But it's about who do you want to be in the labyrinth with? And I wanted to be in the labyrinth with my family. And the realization... There was so much that happened after I got home. When, once you start to choose your response, then the real difficulties happen. Once you start to be conscious, then the real work happens. 
It is so easy to go through life with those patterns and habits. It is hard to choose your responses. When I started to choose my responses, I, w- I-, I came to the realization of just how bad a father I was. How if it wasn't for my wife and the strength that she had, we wouldn't be together. And when I think about the way I treated them, and I use that bullhorn, by the way, at home all the time. Something that was very successful in the maze because you don't know the difference. It's hard. But to slow down and choose your response will bring you the awareness of what's really important to you. Um, Really quick, uh, Shayton is here. Uh, Before the heart attack, I kind of half-heartedly agreed to climb Mount Rainier. And and obviously after the heart attack, you're you're not gonna do it, right? Um, And part of, I I look at this, this experience, camaraderie, Shayton, because we were all together. It was a lot of fun. Um, the exhilaration of being there, the, the being able to say I recovered from a heart attack and could climb a mountain was, was also awesome. But the freedom that I felt, because at this point I was, I, I was already in that journey of self-discovery of choosing my responses. I made a decision on that mountain, I don't know if you remember, that it was time to retire. I love Airbus, they were so good to me and and I would continue to grow in that company. But it represented and it was, it was, it was too hard for, some, for me to break away from all those patterns and habits. And if I truly wanted to be congruent with what was in most important to me, my family, I, I needed to make a change. And I, and I made that change. I had a stimulus, I had an event that caused me to slow down but we all can choose to slow down. We can all just take a breather. What Matt, just be present with ourselves. I wish I could say it's it's perfect. It's not. It's hard. You will be tempted at every change in your life, at at every next moment, you will be challenged. Those old habits, they don't go away easily. They're still there. I'm still, I still fall into the trap. But, But I'd like to say I'm aware and I think about it. And I think that's the, that's what we can give ourselves. If we can give ourselves that ability to be aware and, and, and accept you're not gonna be perfect. You're gonna make these mistakes. You're gonna try to slow down. You're gonna try to be a better father, but you're gonna make mistakes. But be aware of it and you'll, you'll try to be better. And that's my story. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so you guys all have these, uh, <clears throat> yeah, these little handcuffs. This was, this was a great idea. If you think about slowing down and you think about the amount of energy that we give in our lives, sometimes this is a, this is a good reminder. When we are in a maze and we know we need to be in that, uh, in that labyrinth, or we're just looking for that, that, that time to be aware of ourselves, pull this out. 
I mean, I, I, I played with these as a kid. You know, the only way you're going to get out of this is by letting go. Let go. Let go and enjoy the, the labyrinth. Thank you. I'm sorry. sorry.